Hello and welcome to the second instalment in my learning large format series. This week I actually hadn't taken any photos since I've been doing dissertation work, so I thought I'd just show off my gear. I cheaped out on this gear and I don't even have some vital pieces of equipment, but I found ways to work around those parts. So I'll start off with the most important piece of equipment. The camera I bought was an Intrepid 4x5 Black Edition. I went for the Black Edition since I didn't really like the look of the wooden ones and I thought an all black look on the camera would look really nice. I knew I didn't want to splash out a lot of money on a camera in case I wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I would, so Intrepid seemed like the best option. I did ask a few different photographers who shoot large format and they all said that Intrepid was the best option for a beginner. However, one of them said that the build quality wasn't the best and there is a lot of quality control issues, so I was keeping that in mind. The camera is super light and feels okay, but just like that photographer said, you can tell that the camera isn't the best quality. Even though the cameras are checked to make sure they're in perfect working order before shipped, it just still doesn't feel that great. I wasn't expecting anything amazing though as I knew what I was buying and I knew the build quality wasn't superb. And although it doesn't feel the best, you can tell that it's not going to break anytime soon so you don't really have anything to worry about. Right, let's move on to my lens. I had previously made a video where I shot portraits on 4x5 and throughout that video I primarily stuck with a 150mm 5.6. After seeing the results, I realised that this lens wasn't for me. While it does seem great for many things, close-up portraits is definitely not one of those things. I've only ever seen one photo that's like sort of close-up that looks good shot on a 150mm. I definitely would like to try one again in the future to see how I get along with it after learning a bit more about 4x5, but for now, I knew it wasn't the lens for me. I then looked for a lens that was good for portraits and that's when I came across the 210 focal length, and I quite liked the look of them, but I did not like the price. I also wasn't a fan of limiting myself just for portraits. I know you can shoot other stuff, but I feel like it'll be a bit tight for certain things. So that is when I found the 180mm focal length, and it was perfect. The 180mm focal length was cheaper than most 150mm I'd seen, and it was definitely cheaper than all of the 210mm I'd seen. Anyway, the lens that I bought was a Fujinon 180mm 5.6. This means that I have that slightly extra compression for portraits, but it's also wide enough to do basically anything else that I want to do. I also wanted a lens that had higher shutter speeds. The highest shutter speed on this Fujinon is 1 400th of a second, and that's perfect since I plan to shoot large format wide open most of the time, so I can get that crazy large format look. The lens feels well built and solid. It's also quite aesthetically pleasing, and it just makes me happy with this purchase. I knew a tripod was a vital piece of equipment for large format photography, but I didn't realise how much thought people actually put into it. After seeing the price of the tripods that I've been recommended, I realised that I made a financial mistake getting into large format. However, lucky for me, I already had a tripod, albeit a cheap tripod. The tripod I have is this random one that I found on Amazon because my old one was getting a bit too weak for the cameras that I had, like it just couldn't hold my GFX at all. The tripod I have is a Joylcan H80 and it's okay. It's really not anything amazing, but it works. It can barely hold my GFX when I have my Miticon on it, but it's surprising that it can hold my entire large format kit with ease. However, I definitely am going to need to upgrade sooner rather than later. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I can't recommend it if you want something that's good quality, but if you want something that's cheap and gets the job done, then I guess it's good for you. Anyway, now let's move on to film holders. I was shocked to see the prices of brand new film holders. I was seeing them from like £50 to £100, and I just didn't fancy paying that much money. And that's why I looked at the best place for cheap camera gear, eBay. And within a few minutes, I found exactly what I was looking for. I found two Fidelity Elite film holders that were labelled as old 4x5 holders, and a brief look at the description shown that the person didn't even know if they were light tight or functional. It was £15 for both of them, and they looked like they were in alright condition, so I decided to take a gamble on it. Luckily, it paid off, and the film holders were light tight, and they actually were in pretty good condition. They did just have some writing on them though, but other than that, they looked good. I knew that a light meter wasn't going to be in my budget, but I also knew that I technically already had a few light meters. No, I don't have a stash of light meters somewhere, but I do have a few digital cameras. And I thought, hey, it's just going to be the same measuring the light with a light meter and my camera, isn't it? And to be honest, yeah, it's the same. I haven't really noticed a single difference. In fact, the one time that I did use a light meter, I got more inaccurate results than I did with my digital camera. So if you're wanting to get into large format, but you don't want to spend an arm and a leg on a light meter, then just use your digital camera if you have one. There are probably advantages to using a proper light meter, but for now, I'm doing just fine with my a7 III. 
These last few things are pretty insignificant, so I thought I'd put them all into their same category, which is accessories. These things are my loop, dark cloth, shutter release cable, bag, and film choice. The loop and shutter release cable were both from the photography stores at my university. They were really cheap and I just couldn't tell you the brand of them. They work well and they do their job. Although I wish the loop actually had like a little hole in it so I can thread some string through it and carry it around my neck. But it's actually a loop that's meant to be for viewing negatives or like, you know, getting focus in the dark room. It's not one for large format. And the dark cloth that I got is an E-tone dark cloth. I actually already have an E-tone dark changing bag and some chemistry bottles, and they haven't let me down once, so I knew this was going to be a good purchase. And it was, it works perfectly. You don't really need a proper dark cloth, you can just use a blanket. But I just wanted something that could like strap around the camera so it doesn't blow away, as when I have used a blanket, or even like a dark cloth that doesn't have straps on it, it has just blown away at like the slightest bit of breeze. And now onto my camera bag. But here's the thing, I don't actually have a dedicated camera bag. Right now, I'm just using my old beaten up rucksack. It's a Vans and Thrasher collaboration from when I thought I was a skater boy, and I've had it since I was about 14 or 15, and it's only just now starting to break. Honestly, I'm surprised that it's lasted this long. It's a really good rucksack, and I recommend it to anyone, but that's if they even make them anymore, because I doubt they do. However, I am definitely going to need my own dedicated camera bag soon. And finally, my film choice. I knew that I didn't want to shoot on colour, especially considering the amount that you have to pay for it nowadays. So that is why I'm shooting on Ilford HP5 and Ilford FP4. So there we are, I'm pretty sure that was my whole 4x5 kit. In total, I think it all adds up to just around £700, including the two boxes of film. I think that's pretty good, and it's probably the best way to get into large format unless you get like a crazy deal or something. If you have any questions, just comment them down below, and if you want to see more of this series, then you can check the playlist at the beginning of the video or on my channel. But anyway, that's the end of this video, I'll see you in the next one, goodbye.